In this lecture, I'm going to present you a very interesting and uh, important circuit. Constant GM bias or constant transconductance bias. The reason why the reason why this is important is because not only it's real world uh, industry application, but also in research. Constant CMOS, constant GM bias, constant transconductance bias. Here's the circuit. So three layers, a little bit intimidating. The first layer, 12, 13, and 10, 11, and 8, and 9, and including a source degenerated resistance R. This circuit is provided, according to the title, it's the constant current, also the constant transconductance to the rest of the circuit on the integrated circuit. For example, CMOS operational amplifier. If you, actually, I, before I wrap up this lecture, I just Google to see what's out there. So you can also, I encourage you to stop, just type in, just Google constant GM bias, constant transconductance bias. You will see a lot of pop up including this one, this one. So this one, this publication is done by uh, these two researchers, and the title is Differential Wide Temperature Range CMOS Interface Circuit for Capacitive Mans, which represents the micro electro uh, mechanical system mains pressure sensors all right and the source of this circuit diagram is from the research gate so you see a lot of pop up so so the purpose i show in this is to show the application on research even in the mains not just the the the, the amplifiers or something like that so Therefore, you can recognize this, right? This? Sorry. This? So it's the same. 13, 12, 1, 2. 11, 10, 3, 4. And 9, 8 on the left correspond to 5, 6 on the right. It's exactly the same. Then you can recognize this as it's a constant GM bias, constant GM bias. The clicker is not working very well. Let me uh, pause a little bit and fix this. All right. So we talk about this research. And then let's move on. To solve this, to go deeper, to understand more about what's going on with this. Let's start with the transistor characteristic. On the right, Q12, we can put down, you can put down this. ID12. I reference equals have K, K12, parenthesis VGS12 minus threshold voltage squared. Do the same thing with for Q13. And then what? So you need two things. One is ask device. And the other one, the second one is ask who? Kickoff. Kickoff. Voltage law, K, V, L. See the this? It's kind of like the Whitler current source in the bipolar technology. 13 equals 12 plus drop across R. This one. And then solve these three equations simultaneously. Let me take out my video. You can see clearly. Replace VGS 13 and the VGS12 
with the two from the top. I mean this. So replace VGS thirteen equals VGS thirteen equals two ID divided by K thirteen and square root, take a square root. Do the same thing for VGS twelve. And then try to take out the square root from the bottom. And you will get this. You'll get this. You may want to pause just and maybe take note or try to solve this by yourself. You see A, the one on the top, plus B squared minus 2 AB, right? A minus B squared. So it's this. 1 minus square root parenthesis square. And then you will see, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> I have to take my video, okay, to see, let you see clearly. Okay, so therefore, the K, let's substitute K by mobility capacitance and W of L of Q 12. And replace the ratio of K with the Giam's ratio. The W of L, W over L of Q 12 divided by W over L of Q 13. All right? So you, now you see the reference current. Who decided reference current? Two things. Number one, geometry. And number two, the resistance. In other words, if the geometry ratio can be precisely controlled and if we can get the precisely control of the resistance value, then you can get a very kind of stable reference current. Not only that, this is just the, the equation just we just replaced the R. Just put just move it around, all right? In terms of R, if we if someone asks you, give you the the reference current or, or, or geometry ratio, etc., the all of the data parameter and ask you what kind of R can achieve this result. So remember, the, the square root you have to flip, you have to flip, becomes the square root of 12 on the top. Why? Because the W of L of 12 will be greater than W of L of 13. Why? You see the circuit on the left, VGS 13, due to KVL is greater than VGS 12, right? Because the difference between two VGS is the drop across R. So 12, VGS 12 is smaller in order to create the same current. So the ratio, the geometry, the WL ratio should be, should be what? Should be larger, should be larger. This is why we flipped the becomes the square root minus one instead of one minus square root shown on the previous slide. All right, so here's the R. Actually, the one that square root, the big square root on the, in the denominator represent the transconductance GM12. I assume you are very familiar with those kind of equation you learn from semiconductor devices. All right, so now, Here's the outcome, the final result. What do you see? You see the transconductance relies on, depends on two things. Number one, geometry ratio and resistance value. Therefore, if you can, for this reason, if you can precisely control the geometry ratio and the resistance value, you got very stable. Precisely, you can precisely control the transconductance of the Q12. Not only that, once the Q, the transconductance of the Q12 gets stabilized, because there is some dependency between the transistor and the any transistor, especially the input, if it's the CMOS operation amplifier, 
the, in, the transistor on the input stage or the gain stage. So those transconductors can also be stabilized as well. So that's the beauty of this circuit. Constant transconductance. Constant transconductance bias. Let me repeat what I just said. If we can control, if we got, we, we can stabilize the bias current, then the rest of the bias current on the integrated circuit on different transistors can be also stabilized. There are some dependency between, relationship between the, the transconductance of Q12 and the rest of the transistor on the chip. If we can control, if we can stabilize the transconductance of Q12, we can also stabilize the transconductance of the rest of the transistor on the chip, on the analog integrated circuit. All right, this is the takeaway of this lecture. I hope this is very important, very practical for real world application circuit. I hope you enjoy, learn something, and you, hopefully you can apply this to somewhere else in the future. Thanks for watching.